Shane the Shy the most infuriating boss ever. Many games have recurring villains. Sometimes these are minor enemies that you enjoy fighting. Sometimes they are an incredibly powerful boss that tests you then lets you live for inscrutable reasons. And sometimes it's because they are very, very hard to kill. Shane was one of the latter sort and he was the most infuriating and unsatisfying enemy I've ever fought. Because he had just about the best survival tray an evil character can have. He wasn't invincible. He wasn't prescient. He didn't have some magical immortality. He didn't even have some sort of amazingly competent henchman. What Shane hid was cowardice. You may complain about how the villain is monologuing too much, or how he's too strong to fight, or how his behavior makes no sense. But take it from me, it's far preferable to an enemy that just fucking runs away the second you get close. Paranoia and cowardice are survival traits, and if the enemy survives you didn't win, there's no second place in boss fights. We all laugh at the big guy chasing the small fast one around yelling fight fair, but it is just so goddamn infuriating when you're that guy. There's nothing quite as bad as getting within an inch of success, then having it all just evaporate and start over again. We first encountered Shane when looking for some work as newbie adventures. He hired us to look for some old records books in an abandoned and overrun garrison post. We went over, killed the local monsters, found the books, inspected them to make sure they weren't actually tomes of evil world ending magic they weren't, then turned them in and got paid. It was a perfectly normal low level fetch quest, and between our other adventures he offered us more contracts almost exactly like it. We kept doing them it was a good way to shake out new characters, bringing Shane a steady supply of old record books, heirlooms, and art pieces. Until one day when he said he was done and left the city. A few weeks later the entire nation devolved in a civil war centered around a bunch of dukes pushing the claim of a previously unknown heir to the kingdom. We fought in the war long enough to establish that both sides were utter assholes and that this sort of soldiering was a lot more likely to get us killed than get us rich. Then skipped off for a more stable country to hang out in. Now we'd all been at this long enough to suspect that the documents and such that we had been gathering were the cause of the war and a little research confirmed it. But we didn't put Shane down as anything but a procurer for the arsehole dukes. He confirmed this when we met him again in the next country and offered us a job finding some magical objects while we got back on our feet. Since Shane had never screwed us on a job we didn't really have anything against him personally. He made a pretty good case about just being a middleman and assured us that there was no way that anything we were getting for him this time could be used to start a civil war. So we took the job. Once again we verified that we weren't fetching anything overly nefarious then turned the stuff in and got paid, this time it was just magical artifacts used for agriculture. Between bouts of serious questing we kept doing these little fetch missions for agricultural artifacts until one day Shane told us his contract was finished and he moved on again. When we came back from our mission to kill some evil wizard off in the boonies we found the entire country suffering from a famine due to some sort of magical invasive plant species. We helped the locals hunt down a bunch of nutty druids who were using the artifacts we found to help grow the plants and put Shane on our to-do list. We figured that two nation level disasters in a row were a bit much to put down as coincidence. Innocent middleman or not Shane was not good for the general health of the world. So when we got to the next country and Shane once again offered us a job, we went to his new office planning to interrogate and kill him. Unfortunately the second we started to get unpleasant he hit a panic button, jumped out the window, and ran faster away than any of us could follow. We tracked him to a mansion and made another attempt, except this time there were some pretty nasty evil goons to fight us. We fought our way through them to his rooms, where we expected some sort of monologue about his nefarious plans and a battle where he proved to be far more powerful than he looked. Instead we found an open escape passage to the now empty stables. We weren't able to track him this time, and anyway we had some far more serious problems to deal with, but he was on the list, as soon as everything above him on. The list was taken care of we were going to go wreck his shit, and after a few sessions it was. So we started looking, but it's really quite hard to find someone who knows he's being hunted and isn't doing anything obviously nefarious. We could sort of track him by the chaos he caused, we got to the point where we just assumed that any plague war famine magical disaster was caused by him. The problem was that he always left before everything went to shit and nothing he did was obviously evil. Hell all he did in one nation was start a gold rush. No one thinks of an enthusiastic prospecting firm as an evil doom cult. That is until a red dragon shows up to take ownership of the newly wealthy nation. The problem with following Shane around was that we usually wound up sorting out the current mess while he went and got started on the next. He was like the dickish and game embodiment of a DM. Planning the next encounter while we took on the current one. 
Even when we sorted things out quickly or occasionally just ignored them and correctly guessed where he went next the second he noticed us getting close he would just abandon everything and change. His identity he'd also usually set up something nasty for us on the way out, like assassins or a nice framing. It was infuriating chasing him, and it was even worse when we got close. We actually caught up with him a few times, but the bastard was paranoid as hell and always seemed to have one more escape route than we planned for, and he was retardedly fast and stealthy. After everything was over we looked at his character sheet, the DM was keeping him leveled with us and he was a multi-class character focused on nothing except running, hiding and using items. The only things he used offensively were several ranks of knowledge and some diplomacy skills. Any single character in our group could have easily killed him if we could only catch him, but we couldn't. His complete abandonment of any offensive abilities meant that he was always faster and sneakier than us. Finally to top it all off, almost no one would believe us. Everyone thought we were a bit crazy and to be fair, some of us were, and didn't believe us when we insisted that everything that went wrong was the indirect result of shame. We knew it was though, no matter how many party members died and got replaced, the party as a whole always knew it was all Shane's fault. So we chased him, and had adventures, and chased him, and saved the world, and chased him, and chased him some more. Until one day we got access to Time Stop. We had been waiting for this for a long time. We had planned for this day so hard it was incredible. The war chest we had assembled just for killing Shane was enormous, and we used it all. We hired thieves, we hired wizards, we bribed guards, we called in every divine favor we could, we even made deals with the evil doom cults that Shane might work for. The paladin was ready to fall, the warlock was ready to repent his sins and seek redemption, the bard was ready to swear off women and wine. Whatever the hell it took to nail this slimy bastard to the wall, we tracked him down by waiting for the next disaster to strike, then ignoring it and watching all the nearby nations for low level adventures being hired to collect things or new businesses opening. We noticed a major city that had started building more flammable industrial buildings than usual and some adventurers collecting some weather control artifacts. We knew he was planning some sort of giant fire or something and didn't give a shit. All we cared about was making sure it took long enough for us to catch up to him. We had middlemen hire other middlemen to hire the best thieves to follow these adventures and figure out where Shane worked, then where he lived. Once we knew that, we got the best casters we could to feel out his magical defenses and help set us up to counter them when we went in. Sure we could have just had everyone nuke the place into the ground, but we had to be certain he was dead and not just hiding through a portal or something. We were going to kill him where we could see it happen and make sure it was done right. We went in through one of the escape tunnels while our hirelings covered every other exit or entrance we could find. We snuck up to the door to his room, blew it open, and had our caster use time stop. Shane had almost finished reading his own scroll of time stop I can't imagine the rage we would have felt if he had got his off first. I probably would have killed our DM. Our wizard dumped every magical restraint he could on him, and grabbed him for good measure. Then the rest of us came through the door like El President's SWAT team and dogpiled the little fucker. We stripped him of everything he wore, then scanned him for magic, then surgically removed a few things he was carrying inside of him, healed him up and scanned again. Then hit him with an anti-magic field then scanned again, removed the three things we'd missed of the first pass, then hauled him out of there. We hauled him to a completely empty building outside of the city, only pausing to tell our minions to kill everyone inside, strip the place entirely, then level whatever they couldn't take, and reported us at a location which we didn't plan to actually meet them at, just in case they were followed. We used divine magic to make him tell the truth then got his entire story, along with complete lists of all his associates and the atrocities he had facilitated. Then we made a contract with the strongest devil we could handle to keep him from ever communicating with anyone in the afterlife, and to get him raped with spiky fucking dicks every fucking second of all eternity, and killed him. God that felt good. Then we went about dismantling everything he had ever done and wiping all records of him from existence. We didn't even leave a body to bury. We sure as hell didn't want some nutters worshipping him or trying to save him across time or something. We just wanted him gone. Forever. There was no aspect of him which we thought should be remembered. Nothing about him justified ever, ever, mentioning him again. We deleted that fucker. Made him an unperson. He didn't even have a good excuse for all the damage he caused, he was just a rich, bored, sociopath. It's not like he had an evil divine mission or something, he just woke up one day and decided to dedicate his life to being a complete and utter dick to everyone. 
he wanted to make as much overall suffering as possible, and decided the best way to do it was to sit there and help every little doom cult, or wannabe evil overlord, or rebellious noble carry out their stupid plans. He never personally killed anyone, he just arranged things. He was such a complete and utter tool that it took all the fun out of fighting him and almost took all the fun out of killing him, almost. After we went full inquisition on Shane we weren't exactly popular, no one had believed what we said about the guy before, and now that he was dead we weren't going to bother trying to convince them. We just left and started hunting down every name we got from Shane and fixing everything he had started setting up but hadn't finished. After we got rid of the last dread overlord that Shane had helped set up and the list was empty we all retired and handed control of the party over to the apprentices that had helped us clean up the last of the mess. Things generally got better for the world. There was still shitty stuff going on but it wasn't quite as bad as it used to be. Shane sounds like a complete not a dick. Like seriously. Just no. Just I, I completely get behind how they got rid of him. Like you know just you, you can't take any chances with a villain like that, you know, he's just too much of a slippery shit stain. Like, you know, you just have to deal with them in the most brutal way possible just to make sure you've got your fucking hands on them. Like, honestly, oh, no, a slippery wee fish. Like, you know, like, you know, definitely, like, you know, send him into another fucking dimension of hell or whatever it is, like, you know, but, like, you know, like, who gives a fuck if no one believes you? It was, it was worth it. It was completely and utterly worth it. I'm like, you know, fuck. Do you really blame them? You know what I mean? But hey, like, you know, look, guys, as always, let us know what you thought down below. I really enjoyed this one. If you haven't noticed, if you hadn't noticed the lighting style, it's done by the same guy that did the, um, that other video we did, the Shoggy one, and the one about the Bard. So it's the same group, so it is, by the way, just in case. But, like, you know, look, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Click that wee notification bell to stay up to speed. I'll probably be doing some more videos leading to their D&D group because I just love the way, like, you know, the guy's way of writing, like, you know, it's the guy that did the old guardsman party, for God's sake, and you guys fucking love that shit, and I love that shit, but, you know, anyway, like, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?